Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, this video is going to be all about the cabinet restoration and that's also going to be quite a big job um, figuratively speaking but also literally because yeah, this cabinet doesn't fit on my workbench at all standing up. It's really tall um, so I don't know how much I will be able to film about it just like this. I don't think a lot. Um, but okay, what I would need to do here, um, basically everything, um, everything needs to be redone. The original varnish or lacquer is really badly damaged. In some places it's totally gone, I think. So we will need to re-varnish it. Uh, only thing I still need to do is take off this brass piece here. Um, that's the only um, piece of trim that is still on there. Um, new cloth, obviously, as well. This one is totally torn. Um, yeah, that's it, basically. Well, that's it. It's going to take me quite a bit of time. Um, but luckily, the, the veneer itself and the woodwork is still, I think, um, in rather good condition for its age. Um, I don't see any big damages. The edges here are also still nice. The only damage I see is here on top, and I think that's what we're gonna start with. Or at least that's one of the first things that we will need to do. See, so here on top we have a crack in the in the veneer. Um, and that's the only part of damage I see to the veneer. So that's one of the first things we'll need to do is glue this back. And also here there is a small piece of damage to the veneer, but that's on the back side of the radio. Um, that, it's not that bad honestly uh, this one is worse so that's what i'm gonna start with well actually first thing i'm gonna do is clean this off a bit because i think the radio is still quite dirty um and like this i can't really judge what the original color was of the veneer or of the woodwork um, because this entire radio on the inside has been totally caked with um, dirt and grime um, has probably been sitting in an environment where there was a lot of smoking. So, I, yeah, it will probably also be on the cabinet then. So I'm just going to try and clean this off a bit. And um, I think a lot of dirt will come off and then we'll see a bit better what the state is of the veneer. And um, maybe we can also see then a bit the, um, the original coloring or what maybe cl is close to the original coloring. Okay, um, there is something I want to show you. Um, you see, um, you have a lot of difference in color here. So you have some lighter colors and some darker colors. And all the light colors that you see, that's dirt. Because that actually is coming off when I am uh, cleaning. Uh, let me just show you quickly. See, so here we have some lighter coloring, and uh, see, that's just coming off. And underneath is a very textured, I don't know, walnut type of dark wood. So, I'm just going ahead, gone ahead and give this all a clean and then we can ski a bit better what is underneath. Um, if I'm gonna do the refinishing of the cabinet, well if I am going to do the refinishing of the cabinet, then uh, anyways I need to apply some paint stripper and it, uh, it'll work better if all the dirt and grime which is caked on here, see, is uh, gone. So I'm just gonna go ahead here now spending couple of maybe hours of my life just cleaning this cabinet up. Oh yeah, by the way, um, what I just rubbed off is this piece here. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's clearly very, very, very dirty. Also going to remove this piece of brass here. This was just nailed in with some, uh, yeah, very small nails. The veneer is damaged here underneath. I guess they filed off a bit to get it uh, to fit in correctly. Um, but you can see now that, um, yeah, we have this type of 
I don't know what color is this. Is it um, uh, walnut or something uh, underneath? So that's definitely the original color. And I think here on the bottom now, because I already want the head with cleaning, it's also approaching the original color. And here you can see that the varnish is rubbed off or the color is rubbed off from the, the dial here as well around the knobs. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, continue cleaning. Okay, so removing here the speaker panel um, and it's very simple. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's gonna be simple to remove it, but uh, it's attached there just simply with one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Now, obviously, as everything on this radio, these screws are well rusted. Um, this one is coming out rather easily, but um, yeah, not sure if they will all go out that smoothly. So let me just remove here the speaker panel because yeah, then we can see what is underneath. Um, needs to come off anyway because I need to replace the cloth as well. So. Okay, let's see what we got underneath here. Uh, yeah, okay, nothing special. Um, just a speaker panel and the grill cloth. And as I noticed, the grill cloth is glued in here. I'm just gonna try and get it out as intact as possible. It's not gonna be easy because it just tears very easily, but the reason is that I want to see what the original um, the original fabric would be. See here in this corner it is coming off. Yeah, see, and it's it's a bit it's golden. Nice. See it has a a golden texture. That's beautiful. It's like black and gold. Just gonna try and pry this off very carefully. Um, and then I'll show you the result. Okay, so this is what came out. Um, I managed to get it out in one piece still. <laughs> or yeah, not make it much worse as it was. Yeah, but as you see, this must have been a really nice grill cloth I think um, here you can see it best I guess it's like a black or a dark brown background uh, with some gold um, golden finish um, it, I think it must have looked really nice now the funny thing is that I was actually planning to replace it with a type of golden uh, grill cloth um, so <laughs> um, I was not far off I think See, ah, here you can see it best now. I, yeah, I think this would have looked rather nice. So, well, now I know a bit um, what style I to aim for. Uh, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to, um, yeah, replicate this exactly or find exactly the same cloth, but um, we're gonna go in the golden style, I think. Okay, so I don't have my dedicated microphone here, so I'm just using the built-in microphone of my phone now. So I'm sorry for that, I don't have any place to set it up. So I removed the clamp here from when I um, glued back the veneer and it seems to have caught on quite well. So that seems to be okay. And there is still now, it's now basically a deep scratch, so we'll have to fill that up a bit, I think. Um, now I still don't understand what is the state now of this um, cabinet. I have no clue how it came to be in this state. So either the original lacquer has come off in some way. I don't know because it feels smooth. It's not that it's flaking off or anything. Not at all actually. Or maybe at some point somebody just roughly put some new lacquer on there. Which um, yeah, has been done very badly. 
maybe that's the explanation why you see this dark edge here. I honestly don't know and I don't understand and it's super ugly because it's really uneven. Here it also feels quite rough and here on the top it's really dark. Um, so we're gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna try this ID which I got from Dave Tipton and that is um, I'm going to apply this paint stripper and then put some foil, uh, plastic foil on top of it um, just to um, yeah, not make it dry up while it's working its magic and then leave it on there uh, for um, 30 minutes, one hour or so um, and yeah, yeah ho basically hope that it takes it off um, now I'm just going to only do the top part for now, see how it comes off and then we can do the rest. And um, now the veneer here on the top is definitely the most fragile, like I said uh, earlier when I had to yeah, glue this back. On the other parts of the radio the veneer is still very much fixed, only here on top it's a bit uneven because it's loosening underneath I guess, but let's first apply this paint stripper and then see if we can already get the lacquer off or the varnish whatever you want to call it I'm just gonna do this directly on top of here you do need to apply a thick coat um, and spread it out evenly and then I'm just gonna co uh, like close it in the foil and see if it comes off. This is not enough here on this side. And here in the middle it's a bit too much. I'm just spreading it out. Okay, that looks to be quite okay. Just gonna rub the excess of my brush here on these sides. And then we'll see if we need to do this a second time. Could be if the um, the varnish is sturdy enough that it won't take it off. Could be that we need to do it a second time. Okay. Oh, it's already coming off. <laughs> See if I pull it up, it's already coming off. So that's good. That's just... Okay, I got it on my fingers even. Let's just leave it like that. Let it sit for a half an hour and then we will come back and see if uh, we can get the lacquer off. All right, it has been sitting here for almost an hour, I think. And let's see what happens if we lift this off. Uh, yeah, I think something is coming off. Let's get this out of the way. And um, let's see if it comes off. Mm. Yeah, a bit, a bit, but not as good as I expected. Yeah, it comes off, but um, well, we'll definitely need a second coat. See. Yeah, I figured that this was gonna happen because it felt like it was really the varnish was still really well applied and it was not loose at all. So let's see here it's coming off quite well in the middle. I think it's where I applied the most thick layer of uh, paint stripper. 
Yeah, here it's not coming off. So let me just clean this off and then apply a second coat and we will see if we can get it completely stripped with a second coat uh, and then we can do the sides. So um, the uh, paint stripper is not working, or at least it's not working well enough. See, this has already had two layers and it's still not coming off decently. Um, so I'm just going to use the uh, rotary sander. I think the veneer is thick enough to withstand it and I'm going to use it on the slowest speed anyway and with 120 grit sandpaper. So. I hope I'm not going to damage it. Anyway, if I need to scrub it off with the paint stripper, I also run the risk of damaging the veneer. So I'll just be very careful here. Well, um, that took off the varnish quite easily, I think. Mm, I'm not sure if I like the way this wood is grained, but we'll have to see that after a new layer of varnish is on there. I'm just going to do the rest now and I will show you the result. I'm not going to film everything, but as you see, yeah, it still needs a bit of work. But um, hey, at least... It's um, going a bit faster than with the uh, the paint stripper. Okay, that, that actually went quite well. Um, <laughs> I only went through the veneer in two places. <laughs> yeah, it's 100% my fault. Um, biggest one is over there. Even though it doesn't feel like it. I mean, it doesn't feel like I went through. Uh, I, it's completely flat. So we'll have to color that in a bit i think and another place here on the side somewhere let me see i think it was here yeah so you always have to pay attention on the uh, edges and ridges and these kind of things um but okay i do think it does look better now i mean at least all the bad varnishes off there are some places where i still need to finish it off a bit by hand like here um and um, yeah, now the the wood grain on this, I'm not sure if I like it. It has really well um, dark um, grain, very expressed grain. See over there as well. Um, so I think I was anyway planning to do a, a rather dark colored varnish on this one. I think I'll need to do that. If I will put a light color on this, it, it'll not look great, I think. So let me just finish off this job by hand, sanding the, the edges here a bit by hand. And um, then we'll have a look on what is the next step. So um, I'm trying to put a bit of wood staining here or color staining on these places where I chipped through the veneer or where the veneer was already gone 
And um, the one here at the bottom, the big one, yeah, that worked out quite well, actually, to fix it up. I'm now trying to do this small one here. And it's also coming up quite well. Um, yeah, I've also touched up the uh, the chips and not that much. There were only three places where the wood was chipped away a bit. Touch that up with some wood filler, which is also drying at the moment. See, there is also a bit over here, uh, which I already touched up slightly. But I'm just gonna apply a bit more stain to it to get it a bit darker. And uh, yeah, I don't think you'll ever notice this again. See, and um, the place where I had the big chip uh, gone. Can you still see it? It's over here. So that's actually looking very good. I think I'm going to leave that like it is. Now, the bigger problem here is um, these yeah, stains that I got here from the knobs. I don't think I will be able to get those out. They are really deep in the wood and I really don't want to damage the veneer any further. And um, I'm afraid we're gonna have to live with this. Um, here as well. But uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do, but I don't think I can get this out. So I'm just um, touching up the touch-ups here. <laughs> no, I uh, the, the things where uh, the wood was a bit chipped and I had to fill it with wood filler. Um, these were sanded and when you sand them they become a bit lighter in color. So I'm now simply touching that up with some staining just to make sure that it doesn't stand out. Uh, the color is matching pretty well and I will think you will don't notice it anymore once I'm done here. Uh, it is a bit of work because you don't want to just apply a bunch load of stain on there because then you will also stain the surrounding area and you will still see the, the touch up so I'm just with a very small brush um, just applying some stain here and then wiping it off with a with some cloth and uh, just to yeah get it a bit even and even out the color also as well a bit so um, yeah this this will take me a bit of time <laughs> but I'm getting there okay um, I've got here some dark oak colored varnish um, I'm not sure how this will look uh, as I already sh showed earlier with some other restorations that I did on the channel I typically don't use with uh, wood staining I um, I immediately use a uh, yeah a colored varnish as a first coat probably also as a second coat um, and then we will see if we still need some clear varnish at the end. So this is dark oak uh, colored varnish with satin gloss. I have no idea how it will turn out on this cabinet, but I, I do want to have this one quite dark um, because of the reasons I explained earlier. So this is the close that I have. Um, so yeah, let's see what we what this gives. It does look black, purple more or less, but <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, this is quite exciting. All right. That's not looking too bad, actually. Probably I'm already seeing that I'm going to need a second coat, but that's not a problem. Uh, 
Uh, it's turning out, yeah, it's giving it a nice uh, dark or deep brown color, which is exactly what I wanted, so that's good. Now the edges here are going to be a bit more tricky. Okay. Yeah, sorry that I'm not saying anything. I'm just really concentrating here. <laughs> yeah, the bottom. I'm not sure if I will be able to do that. I think I'll need to finish off the bottom rim with a brush. But um, yeah, here are some spatches that I missed. Some spatches, is that even a word? I don't think so. Some patches was what I was trying to say. Okay, yeah, the bottom, I can't reach all the bottom. So let me just do the other side as well. And then we'll do the front. Here I missed a bit on the edge as well. I think anyway we're gonna need a second coat. Okay, let's do the front. Um, I'm trying to follow the grain of the wood here, but it's not easy with this uh, these cutouts. I'm almost out of paint. I might need to, well, out of varnish. I might need to take a bit more. I didn't take enough, I think, from the can. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do a second coat anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's super thin. Um, I might have enough. I think I might have enough. Now I don't know yet if I want the front glossy or satin. We can always fix that at the end because the last layer that you apply will be the, the finish. So. Um, if I really want it glossy, I can always, right at the end, add a, uh, a layer of glossy transparent varnish. But I don't know if I want that. I don't think so, actually. Yeah, just enough. It's uh, really... <laughs> well, that was a um, really good estimate, this amount of paint. Uh, varnish, again, making the same mistake. Now, um, when you apply varnish with a roller, uh, it can sometimes create a bit of bubbles. And I think I have some here and there. It depends a bit on the varnish and on the temperature in the room, how much you have and if they clear out during drying. But what you can do is you can, uh, after it has dried like half a minute or a minute like it has now, you can very lightly go over it without putting any pressure on your roller and that should get rid of the the bubbles that should even out the varnish a bit as well obviously the thinner you apply it the less chance you have on creating bubbles so Okay, um, that's actually looking very dark, but okay. Um, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna do the bottom edge here and we'll see what the result is. Um, I'm not sure, <laughs> we will see. Okay, so the first coat has dried. And it's looking quite good. Here on camera it's a bit lighter than um, 
than how it looks here in real life. Uh, I think, let me adjust the lighting here. I think this is more or less correct on how it also looks to me. Um, I, I like it. Um, it's not yet completely, you see, I mean, it's not perfectly covered yet everywhere. So it really needs a second coat. Um, and for that, we really need to send it first. But um, yeah, I am already quite happy with this. I also like that I picked the dark color because yeah, these, the grain here is so pronounced that um, I think it will be very difficult to get this looking well with a light um, varnish or a, yeah, a light stain. So um, yeah, so let me now give this a new layer or uh, yeah, a sanding. Uh, send this down very lightly just to get it even and, and then we can apply a second layer Also here the touch-ups that I did they turned out really nice here as well They even came out a bit darker than I expected so Maybe the staining wasn't even necessary, but hey, I am okay with this um, It's flat and uh, it matches more or less the color here also the part where I went through the veneer here on this side um, I don't think you can see it anymore No, you don't notice it anymore. I can't I can't even see I think it was yeah, it was over here but um, that turned out very well Okay, so this has been drying and actually it turned out quite well I am rather pleased with the results, except for this area over here. Well, you can see it, and there is quite some staining here in this area. And I think it's because here the veneer is loosening from the wood underneath. You can't really see it anymore now. If I do like this, yeah, then you can see that it's not completely flat. It's a bit wavy, and here in these areas, the veneer is loose when it was wet from the uh, new layer of varnish that I applied you could clearly see the bubbles in there um, but because it's not flat com not completely flat when I last sanded it before the last coat of veneer I went through the lacquer in some places yeah because yeah that happens if it's not totally flat the surface that you're sanding and obviously then you can you don't get this covered anymore correctly um, So yeah, how do I fix this? I think I need to redo the top area the rest of the cabinet is more or less fine But I think I need to redo the top area and For that I think it's best to get from this area the lacquer completely off again and um yeah, it's a bit dangerous to do it with paint stripper because I don't want it to drip off to the sides here because see that that's perfect nearly Yeah, that is perfect mm, So I'm thinking about sanding this very lightly by hand to get the lacquer off and then we'll need to find a way to Yeah, get this flattened again The rest of the cabinet is quite okay. There is only one remark that I still have and yeah, it's a bit my fault. I think that that's here on the Edge here where I couldn't reach with my roller. I did that with a brush, but as you see um, I didn't Even it out well enough so you can clearly see the brush marks over here I think that might be fixed with some steel wool simply very lightly sanding over it and then polishing I think that it's not a big deal compared to the top. Um, for the rest, I think it's quite okay. I mean, the result is good. The um, varnish, the color of the varnish is quite nice. And um, yeah, it applied really well. So let me see if I can get this fixed here a bit better okay so let me show you what I'm doing here I already uh, repaired as much as well repaired or did an attempt here to glue this back um, so what I'm doing is I'm actually cutting open these bubbles I only have a couple left to do here is a small one 
So what I do is I um, cut it open or make a cut along the place where I think that the veneer is loose. Then if you go underneath, yeah, see it is a, it is indeed loose here. See? Oh, I'm not uh, in focus here. Yeah. And then I take um, a bit of wood glue and I go underneath and I squeeze it in. It doesn't need to be much. Oh, that's not difficult to do with one hand. And well, the other hand filming here, but uh, okay, I think that's enough. And then I squeeze it in the both directions of the bubble, like that. And that has worked actually quite well. Um, and I have one or two left to do here, I think over, over here somewhere. You can hear it if you tap it. And here I need to flatten this out a bit more. And then we're gonna clamp this together or put some weight on it, let it dry overnight. And then tomorrow I'm gonna sand this further down. See here I already did a bit. And this needs to be much flatter here. So it's quite a bit of work, but I, I think I will get there in the end. Okay, so that is clamped um, very tightly. I'm gonna leave this overnight and then we'll have a look again at this tomorrow. Okay, so these repairs seem to have worked pretty well and I sanded the top of... Man, it's raining outside heavily here, but... Uh, I sanded the top completely and uh, I removed at least one full layer of lacquer, I think. Um, on camera you don't really see the difference between these two. But in, in real life, this one is much darker than that one. Um, so, and this one also has a glossy finish or a semi-gloss finish. And here, obviously not, because the lacquer is almost gone here. So I'm going to tape this off, because I don't want to disturb these pieces. And then um, I'm going to put a new coat of lacquer here on top. Um, and I think it should look quite okay in the end. I think um, this is gonna work out. Um, these repairs, they went quite well. I think only here is still a bit loose, but um, yeah. Most of the big bubbles, they are definitely gone. Um, so just let me do this, apply a new layer of lacquer here on top. I think maybe one might be enough. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what is the next step. And after two, again, two layers of lacquer here on top, it's looking absolutely wonderful. Now, again, I have the feeling here that on video it shows a lot lighter than it is in reality. Maybe I can change the exposure here a bit. Um, give me a second. Um, yeah, like this is more... On my, the screen of my cell phone now, this is more matching how I see it. It's um, looking absolutely wonderful. The only thing that I still need to fix now are the, the striping that I have here at the bottom. I also gave this a third layer um, because these, yeah, small planks here on the bottom, they were a lighter type of wood than the rest of the cabinet. So I thought that fitted well. Now, here on top, I think it's absolutely perfect. I cannot see any bubbling or any uneven teeth in the lacquer. It's really good. See, this is the crack that I originally restored. And I don't think I will get it better than this. It doesn't bother me a lot. It uh, looks a bit like an, uh, a defect in the boot or something looks quite natural see because here you have the same types of graining and these are not cracks this is really the graining of the wood here so that that doesn't bother me too much i'm i'm really happy that i got it to look like this because um if you uh, remember how it originally looked yeah this is much better and here we had this patch up that i did 
also not almost not noticeable here really pleased now let me get uh, to work here on this bottom section um, yeah not sure if I will be able to improve that a lot but um, I will try okay so the cabinet is done well the woodworking is done finally um, now this took me a long time to get it finished simply because I didn't like doing it so <laughs> I kept um, finding other things to do and other projects to do so um, yeah that that's why this video took a long time to get published um, now it has two layers of uh, lacquer colored lacquer um, they are satin finish and um, I kept it like that I decided not to add any more layers or any more clear lacquer because the yeah the result is quite good um, I what I did though at the end is I sanded with uh, steel wool very fine steel wool um, and then um, I put a bit of wax on my steel wool so um, to give this extra satin finish effect so this is a trick that I got from a um, an old woodworker's handbook um, if you have a finish which if you want to have a satin uh, finish and your finish is a bit too matte or too glossy then you can take a bit of steel wool put some wax on it some like beeswax carnauba wax or something like that and just start sanding or yeah buffing basically or yeah, no sanding and then afterwards you buff up the um, remaining wax that is on there and you get this really nice um, satin finish so even though my finish was already satin the lacquer was already satin I still did this um, yeah sanding with uh, wax filled um, steel wool and the result is really good uh, I really really like how this turned out um, now I couldn't find my carnauba's wax so I, I must have mislocated it somewhere so I used this really old piece of uh, wax polish I don't know where it's from it's probably older than myself this box <laughs> but um, I found this I used it it also worked but I would advise to just use um, yeah beeswax carnauba wax so um, yeah just a quick heads up it's already a bit dusty <laughs> um, because it has been standing here a while letting it harden out so uh, yeah I am very pleased with how this turned out um, also the um, yeah touch-ups that I did they are perfect see here these this is this was touched up or glued back here near the end here was also a touch-up done but um, here as well I think they are almost not noticeable so that's that's great um, now what I still need to do here I think we still have one video left but there is still a lot of work to do so I don't know when I will be able to um, yeah publish it but basically I need to mount a new uh, grill clot I have um, I have some new cloth uh, to put in there um, I need to make a yeah dial glass because that one is gone I need to polish the knobs and the brass here and everything um, and mount everything inside and then the biggest work is I still need to make a um, yeah wooden back panel because uh, the, the back panel is gone as well so there is still quite a bit of work for me to do here but I will combine all those things in the in one video and that will be the next video and I don't know when I will be able to put it out because I'm going to do these things in between other projects and um, so yeah you'll just see it when it happens so uh, anyway um, I'd like to thank you for watching and um, I'm sorry that it took this long to put this video out but hey I've not forgotten this radio we will get it finished uh, I don't know when in a couple of weeks perhaps maybe in a month or so but it will be finished at some point <laughs> so um, anyway Thanks for watching, take care and uh, see you in the next video. Bye bye.